last spring. So he's got a couple of ticks. The track pattern probably works against him. OK, looks uh, probably against two for the offer. But he looks great. The offer parades well. A campaign and a start that we'll learn a bit more about him, obviously. High up in Caulfield Cup, Melbourne Cup markets. Got to say, best forms to date is on wet ground. Yeah, much anticipated return, isn't it, this horse? Uh, coming back into this race, favourite for the Melbourne Cup, as you say. A lovely piece of work here at the Valley on Tuesday morning with Hippopus. He had that horse's measure and was working well within himself. We've seen him run really well first up at a mile before, carrying weight behind Index Linked and Labaz. That was going back last spring. He made a lot of ground up in that sort of event. Now, the cleaner's going to take him along. It's going to help to bring this horse home through the line from the 400. Here's three, Cracker Jack King. A little bit better behaviour. He hyperventilated at Flemington and uh, ran his race before, during and not after. Uh, he's got talent. He'll need this for mine. And I expect, look, he's a silly $61 betting chance. Yeah, he is. But look, he, he, he probably does need the run. We need to see him again under Australian conditions. He's had plenty of problems since he was purchased by Darren Dance and the team there at ATB. You hope for their sake he can come back to his best because at his best he's a serious middle distance horse. Here he is, the cleaner. He can cheer for him, partners. He's 480 to 460. He's a great story and the story can only be enhanced by an all-the-way victory here. Well, what a star he has been of the winter so far with his daring front-running tactics. He came unstuck in the winter championship but it took a very good horse in Akavaroon to run him down and beautiful wins here at the Valley. 1,600 either side side of that, you know where he's going to be, out in front, you know where he's going to be around the corner, out in front, yeah. the question is will they catch him that last hundred? Still a bit bully in the cut, the old boy. Uh, <laughs> Mick Burles or the horse? Show me shades of Vogue, there's the five, this is Mourinho, brilliant first up winner here, loves Mooney Valley, perhaps not classy enough but he loves this track. Yeah and you can't write him off for that fact alone, his form here at the Valley is just excellent, he's had the eight starts for four wins in a second including a JRA Cup win last spring. Loves the venue, and the form out of that win, I think it's going to be pretty strong. The United States was a good run. We see Foundry again here out of that run. I expect this or, uh, that horse to improve. Yeah, he's a, a no shock if he runs a place. Here's Pakal, who crammed a cup in the last spring, beating Satoria's good form, trial Monday, and option to go here. Trials have been OK. This is a horse that we have seen race really well fresh in the past. I like him sort of sitting fourth, fifth, sixth in the run off a strong tempo, because he is a horse that can quicken off a strong tempo, and that's all important in a race like this. Ladari well, OK first up, with a better second up record. Again, the tempo of that race didn't really suit the horse. It was as if, seeing third in the run, he didn't quite know when to go in that since sprint sort of uh, style race from the 800. I thought he was OK to the line, and he is a horse that really can improve second up. His blamey stakes win at Flemington beating Foundry is the form reference to use here. Pete Gallagher is himself leading around uh, Havastan, who chased home his stable mate Mourinho. Not much between them, wherever they finish here. No, probably a, a little bit strong for this horse. I prefer Mourinho in a race like this, but uh, you can never ride off fast end because he's got that class to him. Star rolling, terrific first up to win the Lawrence Sears, a true weight for age form. He's the one who I think is going to get left to do the work here, chasing the cleaner. Yeah, maybe the coming of age win for this horse, that first up win in the Lawrence. We've seen him promise and just skirt the edges of some really good races in previous seasons. Maybe this is the season he really stamps himself as a player out to this level. The problem is that Lawrence Stakes, previously the Liston Stakes, hasn't been a great form reference for winners going forward. Here's the 10 Greek Caro. He really strengthened up this campaign. Just a, a clean out run after a long break in the penny edition. Not sure the pattern's going to suit him here, but keen to learn a lot more about him today. Really difficult to run on that Morfordville Parks track on occasion. They walked in that race. It was a race that favoured those true sprinters sitting up with a turn of foot near the pace. So the run was a, a little bit better than it looked there. He's trimmed up and taken some good benefit from that run. If he runs in the first five or six, I think trainer Jake Stevens will be pretty happy. Of course, last time Mark Sarah wore those colours, he wrote Alco Pop uh, here. And his foundry was uh, expected to race better, six into four eight or 460 in that Mourinho race. Interesting tongue tie goes on. They're going to be aggressive on him, trying to ride him uh, more forward today. Yeah, that gear change is what caught my attention. The tongue tie on. Did he have some breathing issues? Did he maybe get the tongue back and blocking that airway first up? Because we know him to be a high-class galloper. He's got some ledger form in the UK. I still have him as a, a leading Caulfield Melbourne Cups chance from the Williams yard, but this is a race that he needs to stand up and be counted. So for Carl, who's resuming today, well supported Supported. Goes in, he has the white cap and uh, to separate it in these similar colours, Ladari red cap. Ford Teller about to come along. Ahead of him will be the offer, Tommy Berry, reigning Melbourne Cup favourite.
coming up into the barriers now. And then Fortello, whose only start previously here at Mooney Valley was his fourth in the Cox Plate. He's going to be the final one to move up. A drifter out to $7 on track. So the cleaner favourite ahead of Star Rolling. And they're right now for the chin now. Racing. And the cleaner jumps well, so too Star Rolling. Forteller a bit slow from outside, and Pakal goes back in the early part, and Cracker Jack King just off the speed, and so is Foundry. Gricaro's wider at Mourinho's very wide. It's the cleaner at a control gallop in the early part as he runs to the 1200. He's a length in front of Star Rolling. Gricaro deeper out, and Cracker Jack King right on the speed, fourth on the fence, followed by Foundry. Mourinho out wider, a length away. His stablemate Havastan, followed by Ladari. Two Pakal and then came the offer and three lengths away for Teller. The cleaner at the thousand by two. Star rolling second. One Cracker Jack King. One Greek Caro. Two Foundry who's about six lengths away from the lead with Mourinho on his outside and they're two lengths from Havastan and then Ladari. Two and a half away then is the offer being followed by Picard and a length and a half last is for Teller. So the cleaner for Steve Arnold comes up the side. He leads by two lengths to Star rolling Cracker Jack King. A length away Greek Caro to Mourinho. Foundry ridden along and then came Ladari starting to make ground on the offer took off back behind them then as Havastan beaten off and Pakal a long way back and Forteller was last so the cleaner here's his moment for the big time he's a length in front of Star Rolling Cracker Jack King and then Gricaro and Mourinho and next was Ladari but the cleaner still in front coming around the home turn now from Star Rolling Cracker Jack King and Mourinho running on the cleaner by a length and a half you know he'll give everything Star Rolling Mourinho's coming the cleaner's hanging on though, Mourinho driving in him but the cleaner won it, the cleaner by a link Mourinho, Forteller was the eye kick to getting home to grab third I'd say from either Ladari or uh, back on the inside was Star Rolling, they were followed further back by Pakal, Gricaro, the offer, Cracker Jack King just wilted the last 100 metres or so and a bus started in Foundry at the end. Well it's a hugely popular win for the punters but for most of all the fans of racing who come and adore this horse because of these great Vorog like tactics rolling along in front. Not that hard early though. Clever by Arnold just ground the speed up 4809 first 800 and then winds it up as Mick Bell's told us from the 800 home and they're all chasing and chasing uh, Mourinho, Forteller and uh, Kay. But uh, let's just talk about the winner shark and then Sammy. Terrific to watch a horse like this and now he's a true weight for age horse. He's in the Cox Plate. Imagine what he could do on Cox Plate Day and the amount of people who'd come just to see this battler from Longford be a main player. Oh, they would fill the spirit of Tasmania. Bruce coming over from the Apple Isle to see their champion, the cleaner. We talk about him as one of the best racehorses that have come across to the mainland from Tassie in probably the last 20 years, and he's proven that today with a really good Group 2 win. He's a star. He goes to the front, breaks their hearts. Didn't so much do that today. It was more of a the beautiful rating ride from Stephen Arnold in front. It was an excellent effort. The man of the moment is Mick Bell's cool, calm and collected beforehand. Let's see what he's like afterwards. Well, he's excited. And so you should be, Mick, because your horse has excited a lot of people uh, many times, but especially here today. And now you're in a Cox Plate.